Hello and welcome to Scarborough, North Yorkshire, where today I'm going to be trying to uncover some of the not-so-seen sights on this beautiful and busy, bustling seaside town. I'm here at the Scarborough Memorial. You can just see it poking up just there. And that is the first place and iconic location that we're going to have a quick look at and talk about. And then I'm soon going to move on to find something railway history related, something that's not really seen by the naked eye and it does hold an important little piece of history for the Scarborough seaside town. And then hoping to move on to a place with a humorous name known as Hairy Bob's Rock. That's quite intriguing in itself, so I won't say anything else about that. And then we'll finish off in the south gardens of the seaside town and take a look at one of the old funicular railways and what hides below it. So first up is where we've begun at the Oliver's Mount War Memorial overlooking the town and the coast of Scarborough. You can see that just there. Next up, we're then going off to Fowlsgrave Railway Tunnel, part of the former Scarborough to Whitby Railway, opening in 1885. Now, Fowlsgrave Tunnel did in fact continue to be used until the early 1980s, around about 1981, even though the through line to Whitby, that did close in 1965. And it was used for carriage storage on the other side of the railway station, which is now the site of the current Sainsbury's supermarket. Now, next up, we're going to jump to something with a really peculiar name, Hairy Bob's Rock. And it did make me laugh a little bit when I first read about this one. And that is on the North Bay of Scarborough. So we're going to go there next before jumping down to the south to have a look. A small underpass that's been covered up for around about four decades. It's been blocked off and sealed, which goes under the South Bay Funicular Railway right by the spars. So now looking at the War Memorial where we are, you can see the racetrack does in fact go all the way around it. You've got the coast on the right hand side and parts of the outer reaches of the town looking down below. We can look at the partially faded map and you can see little has changed Apart from the fact, if we go back to 1901 on this map here, there used to be a reservoir at the very top, the upper reservoir, and also a quarry. Now this memorial, it does go on to name 241 individuals who died in World War II and 70 who died in the Korean War as well. The 53 civilians of Scarborough who were killed in World War I and the 42 civilians who died in World War II are also named. And on the 26th of September 1923, it was dedicated by a councillor, Mr. William Boyd. It's got 11 steps going up to the stone obelisk. And there's one set just there. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. Reminding us of times gone by and the people at fought. And watching over the seaside town of Scarborough. And the views and the sights that can be seen from here are spectacular. You've got Pizone Park pretty much in that direction and that opened in 1912. Sea Life Centre, I can just make that out over there. And that was opened a long, long time ago as well. The Victoria Hotel is also over there and the railway station should be down there if we squint hard enough. There it is, Scarborough Railway Station. I could just see that. And the first train arrived there at 1.45 p.m. way back in July, 1945. And the Valley Bridge is just over there. And the present bridge that's there now opened in 1928.
I'm on Scarborough Railway Station and this is platform one and it is a very very long platform that goes on and on and on but at the very end of it there's a bit of hidden history which is very important for the former railway line between Scarborough and Whitby it's closed in 1965 and opened way back in 1885 that is the view I've got look coming towards the end of the platform there is access down here it doesn't say you're not allowed down here also got the former Fowlsgrave signal box here absolutely abandoned but still stood here the test of time Here is Fowlsgrave Tunnel, 260 yards in length and it was a cut and cover. The other end comes out somewhere where the Sainsbury's Superstore now stands, which is a cut and cover. It was basically dug out as a cutting and then was covered on top and later on built on. Now that is the closest I can get without getting moaned on, but I'm not going to break any rules and climb down because we don't do that. Look at the stone wall cutting behind the signal box and the retaining wall heading off in that direction. The old sign absolutely beautiful and that's where the former junction was leading towards york so Fowlsgrave tunnel that was opened in 1885 and lasted until 1981 and you can see the scarborough railway station is right here and you've got the beach on the right hand side and just up here is where the sainsbury supermarket is but if we jump back quite a few decades to the 1930s you can see those carriage sidings absolutely dominating where the Sainsbury's supermarket is right now and the line heading northwards towards Whitby. And of course, if you did want to go to Whitby, that would have been a most scenic route, wouldn't it? And a hell of a lot quicker than today's method. So I'm now on the coastline right beside the Maroyal Albert Drive which leads on to Marine Drive. I'm looking for something that is known as Hairy Bob's Cave. And there are two stories I can pick up for this, why it's called that and why it's here. The first one is that when the road was being constructed in the late 1800s, one of the workers dug this out and it was a bit of a shelter from bad weather and the storms. And the second one is there was a family of Bob's, B-O-B-B-S. So legend has it that there was one resident of the Bob family that was extremely hairy, apparently so. And there were two versions of the story is that one, he was paid by somebody, a landowner or a local businessman, just to carve this out. Or he just ended up being a local guy with not a lot to do and decided to go and carve it out himself as a bit of a pastime. If we have a look at the map, you can see the road going around and also the sea above it and the land below it where the castle resides today if we go back to the old map and you can see there used to be a subway going underneath the road i wonder if any of this actually remains or it's been infilled and backfilled so there's no tunnel left at all below the road <laughs>
Now you might have been along that road many times and seen this skate park just down there without realising what is immediately behind it. Here it is, Harry Bob's Cave. What a peculiar little thing. Now I believe the windows were put in at a slightly later date to the main crevice that you can get into and there's two windows look. Let's have a let's attempt to have a bit of a nosy inside. Oh look at this. I mean you couldn't really get more than a couple of people in there could you? And the windows do go all the way through. Well one of them does anyway. The other one doesn't. That's just uh hollowed out hole which would look pretty good with a, a candle in there or some sort of lantern. Not sure if Harry Bob ever actually lived in here. Or if Harry Bob ever actually existed. Comment below if you know that they did. And this is the view that Harry Bob or his compatriots would have actually had. Looking straight out of that beautiful coastline but probably protecting themselves from the storms. And out the window. What a truly remarkable thing this is. We can walk around the back doubt there's very much to see other than a load of brambles and the castle is just up there as well and the south beach is just over there and the town I think I've chosen the more difficult route to take towards the south beach and gardens. Right, goodbye to Harry Bob and his rock. I'm going to head off to our fourth and final little location on our Scarborough mystery tour. I'm going to see you in the south gardens. I've come looking for a funicular railway. It opened way back in 1875. It's got a 1 in 75 gradient. It's 87 meters long and it has two carriages capable of holding up to 20 people. When it was constructed, it went in the South Gardens and it caused a separation of the two where there was no permissive way to get from one side to the other apart from going a long way around. So what was the solution? I'm going to show you as we walk down towards those funicular carriages. So final stop of the day is the quaint tunnel right below the funicular railway at the Spa. And that is located right here. You've got the beach and the sea just next to it and you've got the Spa buildings. And looking at the old maps, you've got the Grand Hall Theatre, you've got the Wells and also you can see our funicular railway sat right here. How busy that must have been back in the day. So the solution to get from one side to the other was this, this beautiful short stone arch pedestrian tunnel, five meters in length and you can see it's been done to a very similar standard to what you'd expect on any like railway tunnel. 
with this stepped access. This entrance, this access here has been put in since for disabled access because the tunnel was deemed to be dangerous in the 1970s. So it was all bricked up and nobody could get through and hence people were reduced to using the long walk around the beach or over the cliff top to get to the other side. However, after some investigations, it was deemed that actually it was okay to be used. And in 2022, it was again unsealed and the public could use it once again. Let's go through and have a look at the other side because there's something curious to show you when we get there too. So there's the southern portal and there's my shadow. And there are the two carriages at the top look. Tell you about, look, there's evidence of another one. Completely bricked up. It looks a heck of a lot older than this one as well, doesn't it? Whether that's filled in all the way through or it's just bricked, I'm not entirely sure. I'll take you about the other side and see what that looks like too. Again, excuse the shadows, bricked up with that stone archway. That's the views we've got from where it stands. interesting little tunnel absolutely brilliant isn't it and this is on the south gardens if you want to come down and see it so i do hope you've enjoyed this video looking at some of the more unseen locations of scarborough town there's more stuff on my channel for this area and going further up north to whitby so please if you like this give it a thumbs up and comment and subscribe that alarm in the background has finally gone off just as i finished filming that is absolutely typical isn't it see you in the next one bye bye